Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making pillowy soft and amazing pumpkin cupcakes. So let's get started. First off, set that oven to 350. Now in a large bowl, I'm adding two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm also adding half a cup of granulated sugar. That's 100 grams. Now for the leavening agents, two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. I also want three quarters of a cup, no, just kidding. I also want three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. This will give us a nice balance. Tis the season, so I'm breaking out my homemade pumpkin pie spice. You can buy yours pre-made, but I love having my own batch because you can add whatever spices you enjoy to it. Two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. This one's up on the block. It has cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, allspice, and cloves, I believe. But you can add cardamom or change the proportions as you see fit. I also want two teaspoons of ground ginger. So we're sneaking a little bit of some spices in with the pumpkin pie spice, and then adding more of the spices we want, like ginger and cinnamon. One teaspoon of cinnamon, our scale is done. I'm gonna whisk this up. We wanna combine everything so someone doesn't get a big mouthful of ginger in their cupcake. You want them to all rise evenly as well, so distribute that baking powder and baking soda. This recipe makes 24 cupcakes. The nice big batch is perfect for get-togethers or for gifting. You can get a little cupcake packages, send them out to your friends, and everyone is gonna be so pleased. They're delicious and amazing. Our dry ingredients are done. I'm gonna set this aside and grab another bowl for the wet ingredients. <laughs> it wasn't where I expected it to be. Now in a separate bowl, I'm adding 220 grams or one cup of brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar, but honestly you could use dark if you prefer. If you wanna store brown sugar in a canister or if it's been getting dried out in the bag, just pop some marshmallows in there and it lets them breathe and just breathes some moisture into them and keeps them nice and soft. I'm adding a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree that's 425 grams. Can you make your own roasted pumpkin puree if you wanted to? Yes, you could, and if that sparks joy, then go ahead and do it. You do have to be careful about having just the right consistency because this stuff has been just perfectly processed and it is a wonderful consistency with just the right amount of liquid in it. So it can get a little bit tricky if you're using the homemade kind. I'm just putting it out there. And if you want a video on how to make your own pumpkin puree, you can let me know in the comments. I'm adding one cup of veggie oil in here if you wanted to, you could use an avocado oil or any other kind of mild baking oil. I'd also like four large room temperature eggs. You don't wanna add ice cold ingredients into cake batter or cupcake batter because then the middle takes a little bit longer to bake and the outside gets a little bit more burnt and you're just a little bit less happy. I'm finishing this off with one tablespoon of vanilla extract. It's kind of optional if you really don't wanna use it, but you could also sub in things like a tablespoon of maple syrup or of bourbon any other added flavor that you love. This gets a careful whisk because it's pretty full. I should have used a larger bowl. And if you're wondering, we added the brown sugar into the wet ingredients because it wouldn't like mix up as well with the dry ingredients. You'd have some more lumps. Technically both granulated and brown sugar are wet ingredients, but you can do whatever you want when you bake as long as it works. Okay, just mix it up. Mix, 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 mix. I was reading that pumpkin comes from the Greek word for melon. And from my Greek classes years and years and years ago, I remember that that was peponi, peponi, peponi. That's bad. This looks beautiful and it smells amazing. Oh my gosh, it's like an amazing soup. Now we're gonna pour the wet into the dry and get these into our cupcake papers. Now it's time to pour the wet into the dry. I'm gonna mix this together carefully until the flour just disappears. You never want to overmix cake batter, and if you watch this channel, you know it's because you're activating proteins in the flour, and it's just making your baked good a little bit more dense and gummy. Things can come out of the oven and look perfect and amazing, but then when they cool down, they kind of retract a bit, and it's because the proteins in the flour have been activated and they're yanking everything back. I like to use a spatula for this part because it's not like raking everything together, and it really lets you scrape the bowl down and find any hidden pockets of flour. One final scrape, and this looks really nice. It's time to go into our cupcake papers. Pop your cupcake papers into your tin. If you don't have two baking tins, that's fine. Fill the first one up, bake your cupcakes. You're just gonna cover the remaining batter until you can bake up the next tray. 
fill each cupcake liner about three quarters of the way full. You're using about a quarter cup of batter. Triggered scoops are the best for making cupcakes and cookies, really. You should have a set in your kitchen. If you're making this recipe and you think, oh my gosh, 24 cupcakes is too much for my family, that's fine. You can freeze the unfrosted cupcakes and they'll keep for about two months. You'll just defrost them, pop some frosting on top, and they'll be delicious and instant. This doesn't look like 24 cupcakes, does it? Well, it looks like I got 21 cupcakes out of this batch. I think I slightly overfilled everything, but that's okay. They'll just be a little bit taller and bigger. My cupcakes are ready to go into the oven, 350 for about 20 minutes or until a skewer inserted in the center comes out clean. If you're baking both batches in the same oven at the same time, rotate them 12 minutes into the bake. Here you go. While our cupcakes are baking up, I'm making an easy but luscious cream cheese frosting. I need two thirds of a cup of room temperature unsalted butter and that is 150 grams or 10.7 tablespoons. I had to work the math out and it took me forever. So I'm sharing the number. If you wanted to add in that extra 0.3 tablespoons and make it an even 11, that's fine. I also want eight ounces or 225 grams of room temperature cream cheese. This is gonna be so good. Why did I do that? Hmm, because I'm gonna mix on it and you're not supposed to mix on your scale, but I'm keeping it close because I'm using it for the powdered sugar. That's why. I'm also adding in an eighth of a teaspoon or a nice pinch of salt. I'm gonna cream the butter and sugar up right now. I'm gonna cream the butter and cream cheese up right now. <laughs> and once it's all combined, we can get to adding the powdered sugar. So beat this on medium speed until it's nice and creamy. It'll be about two minutes. One thing you do not want is a lump of cream cheese or butter. It should all be mixed in nice and evenly or a homogenous mixture, if you will. I wanna add four cups or 480 grams of powdered sugar and it's best to add it in a few batches so it doesn't get messy and explode. I added 209 grams in, you remember that. We're gonna mix this on low until it's combined. And while that's happening, I'm also gonna drizzle in Oh, a couple teaspoons of vanilla. It's one tablespoon in total, but I'm doing it in batches. Mmm. Cream cheese and sugar and vanilla is a magical mixture. My scale remembered, it's 209. So I'm adding in the remaining <coughs> to get to 480 grams. Along with the remaining uh, teaspoon of vanilla for a total of one tablespoon. Let this incorporate, and then we can increase speed and really fluff it up. Isn't that right, buddy? Our baby St. Bernard is just in the hallway, waiting to be asked to come in and sample things. <laughs> right now, everything's combined, but I see some lumps and bumps around here, so I'm increasing speed to medium, and I'm gonna mix this up until it is perfectly smooth, light, and fluffy. You can tell it's getting close because it changes to a lighter color and just has this amazing cloudy appearance. Okay, this looks beautiful and amazing. I'm gonna grab a piping bag and a star tip and get to piping. My cupcakes are out of the oven and completely cool, so now it's time to top them off with some luscious cream cheese frosting. I'm using an 846 tip but you can use anything you'd like or even just dollop the frosting right on. Either way, they're gonna be delicious. If you're piling the frosting higher like I am, you should probably double the frosting recipe. If you're doing a nice simple rosette or a skim, this will be just enough. And if you want, you can add a little sprinkle of pumpkin pie spice or cinnamon just to finish them off. Mm -hmm. That is like a pumpkin cloud topped with the most amazing cream cheese frosting. Oh my gosh. You can also make a delicious sandwich out of it if you want to eat it even more easily. Mm. That is just so good. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my pumpkin playlist.